Hey everyone, it's June 17th, and that means that if today's your birthday, you share it with serial killer John Norman Collins, known as the Ypsilanti Ripper and the Michigan Murderer, who may have murdered as many as eight young women in the late 1960s, and that is him right up there. Born in Windsor, Ontario, Canada in 1947, Collins had a rough childhood with his father leaving the family when he was an infant. His mother quickly remarried, but that relationship was filled with abuse and alcoholism and didn't last. It didn't help that his stepfather once threw Collins at his mother during an argument when he was two and used him as a human shield when in a confrontation with an armed man when he was three. After that marriage ended, his mother moved north across the border to Detroit, where she married William Collins, who adopted all three of her children. Yes, north. Look it up on a map. His development was delayed due to the abuse he suffered, and as such wore diapers until he was five. Collins was a gifted athlete who did well in school, and as captain of the football team and star pitcher for the baseball team dated aggressively in high school. He enrolled in Eastern Michigan University in 1965 when his dark side began to take over. Kicked out of his fraternity for stealing, his grades started to slip as a sophomore, and when he found his pregnant sister alone with a man, he beat him unconscious and then pummeled his sister so badly she had to be admitted to a hospital, all while calling her a tramp. His crimes were about to become far, far worse, however. At the age of 20, Collins followed a co-ed in his car as she walked home from campus, trying to convince her to take a ride but was rebuffed. After snatching her up, he drove her to an abandoned farm where he sexually assaulted and stabbed her 30 times, removed her feet and parts of her hands, and left the scene. Over the next month, he returned to the crime scene three times to move the remainder of the body. Next, the authorities found a 13-year-old girl who had been raped, strangled with a cord, and beaten with a hammer. Once she was found, he attended her funeral, asking if he could take a photo of her corpse, and when denied, he said, you mean you can't fix her up enough so I could just get one picture of her? A year later, the body of another student turned up, showing signs of sexual assault and being stabbed 25 times. Collins was questioned in association with the investigation into this murder, but denied knowing the victim and had an alibi that seemed legitimate at the time. The following year, Collins struck four more times, killing high school and college-age girls in southeast Michigan, abusing the corpses by doing things such as jamming a branch into one victim's genitalia and slicing off the breasts of another. It was 1969, and the press was reporting extensively on the crimes, making the public wary of the predator that was living amongst them. Collins was finally apprehended a week after his final murder, and eyewitnesses were able to tie him to his last victim. He was convicted of the seventh murder in 1970, but prosecutors declined to file charges for the previous six since they felt their case was largely circumstantial and more difficult to prove. Additionally, a murder in California matching the same M.O. occurred while Collins was in the area on a brief camping trip, and it's believed he killed that victim as well. He was sentenced to life in prison with hard labor and solitary confinement. Collins maintains his innocence to this day, but remains behind bars where he will stay until he dies. If this is your birthday, I hope you have a great day. Leave me a comment so I can wish you a happy birthday. If you know someone whose birthday it is today, send them this video so they can find out all about their birthday twin. And to John Norman Collins, I say, happy birthday, you bastard.